ransom captive Israel that mourns in lowly exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of the Candle of Hope, and our hope is in God and in his Son, Jesus Christ. For he is appointed by God to be judge of all things. He is the one through whom God has promised to save and to redeem his people. So we light this candle today to remind us that he is our hope and the hope of the world. the sin of the world, the innocence of a lamb, soon everyone will know. It's a Messiah, he's come at last. It's a Messiah, he's come at
Our Old Testament Reading Psalm chapter 27, verses 13 and 14 I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage, wait for the Lord. Our New Testament Reading Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7 In those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. This is the word of God for us to live and share. Thanks be to God. So, I have this serious problem with Christmas presents. Don't worry, no soapbox is here. Now see, the problem is actually with me. I hint at the gifts, you know? I spill the beans and I ruin the surprise every year. But I can't help it. I love it so much. Mommy, I need you! I'm coming, sweetie! Spoiling the surprise kind of reminds me how God works. He likes to hint at big things. Like the way he hinted about that very first Christmas gift. All those years ago, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. And the virgin shall conceive and give birth to a son, and he shall be called do you Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Yeah, he was preparing a gift, all right. God packed up the greatest gift that the world had ever seen. Not even he could keep it to himself. He gets me. And God didn't just let the surprise slip once. No, he let the cat out of the bag nearly 300 times in the Old Testament. We call them prophecies. But Here's the big difference between God's prophecies and just (laughs) spoiling a surprise. One is giving the gift early, but you don't get to open it. And the other is God giving us a gift of hope while we wait for Jesus to come. (laughs) Do you see it? He wasn't telling us a secret. He was making us a promise. Because We humans, three chapters into the creation story, we managed to mess it all up. Yeah, we needed saving, desperately. So God kept sending us hope through his prophets and messengers. And that hope was the gift of his son, the Messiah. And there will never be a greater gift (laughs) than Jesus. And the cool thing is that hope isn't over. He promises to come again and take us all home. So the gift is just right there. The question is, will you accept it? (laughs) I wonder what I would have heard and seen if I'd been there that night. Mm. I wonder, would I have heard the choirs of angels singing, or would I have been too focused on too many other things? Yeah, or is it possible, what have I seen the star in the sky? I mean, it was an awful bright star (laughs) from what we read, or what have all I been focused on as two frightened teenagers in a barn, you know, or or the, the, the other things going on that night? Yeah. Would I have understood the peaceful silence of the divine presence that night? Or would I just been, you know, just simply focused on the chill of the, that cold east wind? Uh, yeah, and I wonder if we would have, any of us, if I would have even understood the mm. hope of Emmanuel, mm. even in all that was said before, the presence of God with us. Or would I have been focused on the fact that if I was Joseph, that there was no room in the inn and been, you know, Mm -hmm. bothered by that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I've I've thought about that a lot this season. 
Um, if we would have been there, um, what we would have had a scene in here, but, um, what, but could it be possible that um, each of us, if we were there that night in Bethlehem, that, that each of us would have had an entirely, uh, you know, a different view and had seen and heard different things in a different way? Yeah, I kind of think all things being equal, people are people, and we <laughs> probably would have. It's because all of life is this way. Mm -hmm. One person sees it as a miracle, the other person sees it as just simply coincidence. Yes, you know? too. And it seems though, doesn't it, Francis, that that very few people in Palestine, they, they saw or heard or understood what actually took place that night. Yeah, the choir of angels singing were drowned out by the bartering and the trading in the city, possibly, and yeah. in, in, you know, the marketplace. and. And there was a bright star in the sky, but it seems like the Magi from the East are the only ones that actually saw the thing. That's so, right. And also, yeah. if anyone, did they even see or notice Mary and Joseph on that most highly night, yeah. holy night? Um, they or Were they just too preoccupied with their own problems to offer any assistance to them? Right, yeah. And so, you see... Uh, what we see and what we hear mm -hmm. and understand in life depends not on the events, but it depends on rather what we're looking at, who we are and how we're listening. That's right. Yeah. Um, you know, many of you this Christmas season, uh, this year, you uh, maybe have seen again the Charles Dickens, Dickens uh, story, The Christmas Carol. Ah, bah. I, <laughs> That's I, right. I, I've watched it too much. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. But, uh, Christmas, you know, uh, movies are fun to watch again, but there is this one scene that has always fascinated me in that movie, The Christmas Carol. When uh, the Christmas past has just paid a very uncomfortable visit to Eben, uh, Ebenezer, Ebenezer. Yeah. and Ebenezer Scrooge right. is his name, and clearly the old miser is shaken by this and in, in the entire ordeal. But when he wakes from his sleep, does he take the message to heart? No, not no. really. No, he simply just dismisses it and he says. Bah humbug, it wasn't real, just a bit of last night's undigested beef. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, and, and if you had been there in, Bab in Bethlehem that night, right. you know, if, if any of us would have been right. there, what would have we heard, seen? What if we understood anything that was going on, or would have it just been a normal day? But they're, know, they're blocked by our own thinking, you know. Right. Maybe there is a way of knowing. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a way of knowing by asking, asking yourself what you saw this Advent season. Yeah. When you watch the never-ending newscasts that are out there. Do you see the chaos and strife in our world, or do you see sheep without a shepherd? Mm. As we talked about in one of our earlier sermons, yeah. Yeah, and when you went out Christmas shopping, um, did you only see the crowds of people in the stores, or did you notice the worried expressions on some of their faces as inflation has impacted them this year? Yeah, worried because we're all facing this Christmas, mm -hmm. uh, and, and many are suffering because they don't know how they're going to make ends meet. Have That's you noticed right. that this year? That's right. Yeah. And ask yourself, what did you hear this Advent? Did you hear only the blast of music and uh, carols? carols? Yeah. yeah. Or did you hear the silent sighs of the lonely who may be dreading Christmas because it insinuates their loneliness? Right. right? Christmas is a time when people who've lost loved ones, it's a difficult time. It can be a blue Christmas, yeah. And in the midst of the sounds of honking horns and people arguing over parking spots, did you hear the faint sound of hope, hopeful laughter? that comes from downtown. You know, a lot of places around are collecting toys right now for the angel tree, and it's such a blessing to see. Yeah. yeah, oftentimes what we see and what we hear is not so dependent upon the event, but upon ourselves. And what we're looking for. And what we're looking for, if you and I, in fact, if we hear the sighs of the lonely, or if we hear the, the, the laughter of the children, or if we see sheep without a shepherd, then 
than we might just have seen and heard our hope that was born in Bethlehem that night. Yeah, the hope that was born, mm -hmm. yeah. The truth is that most of us focus on uh, the daily failures of humanity, really. You know, we, yeah, we, we tend to. Even, even Christians, we seem to focus on the negative uh, accounts and we miss the hope that's found within the presence of our world each and every day. Our moment away uh, from God or when we fall into sin or the rejection of people who we see different than us oftentimes causes us to miss the hope that we find mm -hmm. in Christ. But if we have our ears open or our hearts open to what God offers us at Advent, there's this constant hints of the coming gift of Emmanuel, Christ, the gift of hope. Yeah. Right? And when we see the prophecies of God turning the world right side up, um, it, it is a transforming difference, you know. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes we look at it as God turning the world upside down. Mm -hmm. But I, I like to look at it as God is in the process of turning the world right side up. And Mary's song expresses this so much. And, and her knowing the prophecies of old and hearing, um, you know, Elizabeth, her, her um, uh, aunt, is, is telling her what, how blessed she is that God has done this thing when That's Jesus right. leaps in a room. And, and, and then Mary goes into this thing where she says, He has shown strength in my arms. He has scattered the proud in their thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down those from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has lifted up the hungry in good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. And if we stop and think about that, Lois, uh, how do we view Mary's song here? Because it, it, it really does matter. Yeah. It matters. Uh, and uh, do we see this as good news? Right. Or um, do we see this as God, like you said, turning the world upside down instead of right side up? Do we yeah. see that? Or, or do these words of Mary just simply horrify us? Yeah. Worry us, yes. Yeah, that, you know, and, and in our world today, I think we see a mixture of that. But it really does focus on how we view the world and how we see this good news of what Christ has for all of us, not all just us. part of us, but all, all of us. All of us, that's yeah. right. And because God's message is always one of hope for those who believe. Now again, in the video that we just saw, uh, the prophecies are not not like God is support, uh, spoiling the surprise, right. but rather it's a promise. It's a promise of hope for all who believe yeah. that the, that um, God, our Creator, um, that he, he comes only from Him. Right? Yeah, and even though the Christmas present was already unwrapped hundreds and hundreds of years ago <laughs> yeah. in the coming of Jesus, we still find hope in Christ far from that time, mm -hmm. uh, and and this hope of Christ isn't over. That's right, it's far from over. Because right. uh, the wonder of Christmas is hope, and it's the best gift that we have already received. Right. Jesus, our Savior. Yeah, and if we look close enough, we can see God at work in yeah. every single person, in every single heart that's out there. And if we look close enough, we can see the transforming hope that Christ is continuing to do in our world. And that's the good news of Christmas. That's the wonder of Christmas hope mm -hmm. that we celebrate today. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's close in singing our benediction together. All right. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious, gracious, gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give God bless you this week.
Amen.